Ah yes, the checkbox. A checkbox is a great way to indicate that a value is true or false, enabled or disabled, on or off. It is composed of an image that indicates if the value is checked and text that describes the value. These are perfect for simple settings that can be toggled in an options menu. Checkbox actually inherits from text button, so you can apply the same techniques from the previous tutorial, Scene2D1. In fact, Checkbox behaves almost exactly like an image text button, making the class redundant. Nevertheless, we can use this space to learn some new tricks with the class button group and how to make radio buttons as well. Let's start off with the checkbox style. Unselected checkboxes usually have an empty square followed by text. Checkbox off is the drawable for the empty box. Notice that if you don't add some white space to the right of the image, the text may look like it's pressed up against the graphic. You can always adjust this in code, but it becomes very painful if you have to do it every single time you use a checkbox. Font is the font you wish to use for the text. As with text button, you can color the font with font color, down font color, and the like, depending on the state of the checkbox. When the checkbox is activated, it usually has a tick mark in it. This can be a check mark, an X, a square, or whatever fits the theme of your skin. Set the drawable as your checkbox on value. Similarly, set the checkbox over, checkbox on over, checkbox off disabled, and checkbox on disabled fields to their corresponding values if desired. Don't confuse these checkbox fields for the fields carried over from the text button style class. Sure, you can set the up drawable if you really want to, but you hardly ever see checkboxes with the background. So people ask me, where's the radio button class? I laugh a little, then I spit in their face. Like I said before, checkbox is already a redundant class. Radio button would be a redundant class built on top of another redundant class. Radio buttons are just checkboxes with round images instead of square ones. Fight me if you disagree. But VizUI has a radio button class. Look, you'll see why a radio button class is not necessary. Let's build a simple example with our checkboxes first. I set my default checkbox style to a standard checkbox with a tick mark in it. So all I have to do is instantiate some checkboxes and add them to my layout. That looks good if I had a screen with a bunch of independent values that need to be set. But what if this was a list of choices and I only want one option to be selected? I'll make them radio buttons. I named my radio button style radio. So I'll simply add this as a parameter to my checkboxes. These look correct, but don't behave correctly. I can still select more than one value at a time. Now we'll create a button group. Add each checkbox to the same button group. When we run it, it finally works as intended. There are some settings in button group that you can play with. You can set a min check count and max check count if you want more than one option to be selected at a time. Honestly, just because you can do this doesn't mean you should. From a usability standpoint, this gets a bit unintuitive for the player. Use this technique sparingly for maybe something like a team selection screen. If you want to control how the button group responds when there is more than the maximum selected, look into Set Uncheck Last. Okay, so normally you would add change listeners to each checkbox like you would with a bunch of buttons. That's fine, but if you want to reduce some boilerplate code, you can override the can check method. This is called when any checkbox is checked or unchecked. Don't forget to call the super method, but here you can compare the index of the checkbox pressed or do some equality comparisons. The real power of can check is the return value. If you don't want a checkbox to be selected for an arbitrary reason, you can put some logic here to determine if it can be checked or not checked. Button group is called button group 
because it can apply to any collection of button or its derivatives. It's not just for checkbox. That's the power of inheritance. In practice, though, you won't really need it for anything else. Yellow traitoring motherfuckers. They're everywhere. Hey, freeze! They're everywhere. 